Surviving the September stretch run requires a total team effort. That's exactly what the A's delivered last night in beating Houston to take over first place in the American League West. With just 21 games left, protecting the smallest of leads means there is little margin for error. No matter the opponent, every day brings must-win pressure. Behind Dan Straley's arm and Josh Donaldson's big bat, the A's take aim at increasing their lead. They play game three against the Astros next. Coliseum. It's a gorgeous Saturday, and we are set for game three of this four game series. It's the Astros, it's the Athletics, and you'll see today's game right here on Comcast Sportsnet California. The Oakland Athletics are now in first place with 21 games left to play. They're in first place for the first time since August 6th. The second place Rangers will play tonight. They will be in Anaheim to take on the Angels. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kyber. Gorgeous day for baseball, and I think whatever happens through this month and hopefully into the playoffs, I think Josh Donaldson is the team MVP. I don't think there's any doubt he has done it all offensively, and he's been terrific defensively at third base. Yeah, he should have been an all-star also. I think Jim Leland even felt that as the manager, but his defense, not bad for a catch of the play. This will be shown many, many times because he went over the tarp and held on to the baseball, but his offense has been spectacular. Home run on on Wednesday gets a left-hander that gave him 20 home runs, 80 runs batted in. He did not stop there because he has continued, as was the case last night against Philip Umber. He had a two-run shot. That was huge because it gave the A's a three-run lead. As it turned out, they would need all three runs. But Josh Donaldson has been the MVP. He's been an all-star. We've talked about other players. Brandon Moss, everything he's done from last year to this year, nobody's done better than Josh Donaldson at third as well as swinging the bat. And with a few lineup changes today, Donaldson back in the third spot. So uh, we'll tell you about those lineup changes when we come back. Good pitching matchup. A couple of talented youngsters. Dan Straley and that man, Brett Oberholzer. Oberholzer, the left-hander, and Straley trying to win his third straight start.
is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Go big at a participating Jack in the Box with Jack's really big chicken sandwich combos for only $3.99 plus tax. Gorgeous afternoon at the ballpark as the Astros and the Athletics set to square off in game three of the four game series. Astros won Thursday night, A's won last night. So this afternoon it'll be Dan Straley trying to get the A's their second win in this series. So Straley and the Athletics take the field. We're in the gold tops this afternoon. And Straley will take on the Astros for the second time this year. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is open this weekend. It's a hot one, folks. 85 degrees. We were told that it was going to be very hot this weekend, and that is the case. So a warm day. We'll see if the ball is traveling accordingly. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. I think it will be. Keep the ball down. Dan Strainer. Over Holzer, you can elevate if you want to and take the chances. But it will carry. So the Astros, the youngest team in the big leagues. But they have played the A's tough it's the second half of this season, and here is their lineup. Jonathan Vi, the shortstop, leads off. El Tube at second. Trevor Crow, switch hitter and right. Jason Castro is again the DH today. Matt Dominguez at third. Chris Carter in left. Brett Wallace will be at first. Matt Pagnazzi will catch for the second time in this series. And Brandon Barnes, who only played half the game last night, he was tossed out of the game. Barnes will be in center field. Dan Straley would like to look back to April the 5th, way back, beginning of the season, his first start of the 2013 season when he pitched against the Astros in Houston. No walks, 11 strikeouts, but he has won his last two starts. And let's hope that he can continue to do today what he did against the Tigers and the Rangers as he takes on the Astros this afternoon. Here's the A's defense today. Cespedes in left, Young in center, Michael Choice plays right. Donaldson, Lowry, Kiaspo, Fryman around the infield with Kurt Suzuki behind the plate. So Straley should have some confidence going after beating the Tigers and the Rangers. And we'll see if that carries over today against the Houston Astros. Astros are 47 and 94 on the season. And the switch hitting Jonathan VR steps in. The first pitch of the ball game is a fastball outside. First pitch, 107. So an entertaining game last night. A's hung on to win it seven to five. It was a long game, well over three hours. I think the A's skipper would have preferred it to be a quicker game, especially a cleaner ninth inning. Yes, <laughs> to say a quicker ninth inning would have yeah, been. Yeah, good. That, that would have been a lot better. And man, talk about a grinder. I mean, I. I asked him last night after I said well, when when can you take a deep sigh and relief you know and he said when I get in my car and head home yeah. turn back around quickly for a day game. And that's after a win. That's it. Imagine what a manager at this point in the season. Thinks about after a loss. Oh. Especially where the A's are like you said at this time of the year. In the air to center field. And Chris Young is under. Certainly underway from the Coliseum. One out here in the top of the first. Batting in the second position. Second base. I think one of the, the problems of manager, Al coaching Jose. staff, you, you think about it. They can have the greatest game plan. They can do all the preparation, but they sit on the bench. They can't do a thing. Nope. All they can do is watch and hope that the players do the job. Actually, it's more relaxing for a player than it is for anybody that's sitting, even for us up here. Two base swings and misses. And this guy, I mean, he's all over the place. Two 277 the average, four homers, 45 RBIs for El Tuve. Four for nine in the series. Against the A's this year, he's 23 for 71. That's a 324 average. So the A's have seen how good this young man is. It's that one on the ground right to Lowry. Out number two. How about uh, how many Altuvis does it take to make a Nate Fryman? Well, you're going to you're gonna get a chance to see. Right These are teammates. Position. Right fielder. Well, you look it up there. Two, but. <laughs> yeah, look at Alberto saying, why don't you drop down a little bit? But It's two guards talking to the center. <laughs> That's, That's what it is. 
uh, Nate. You know, he's got a big smile on his face. Actually, he's playing first base today, and before Straley made the first pitch, he looked in the Astros dugout, a little wave. So somebody, you know, the teammates, you guys know each other. But again, as we reiterate, nobody nicer than that man, Nate Frank. Happy to be in the green and gold. And he's had a great season for the A's. In the dirt, one and one to Trevor Crow, the right fielder. 258 with a homer and nine RBIs for Crow. And he's had a good series with four hits. Now the one thing he offers is contact and speed. And that combination for a hitter is pretty good. Straley trying to have a nice easy first inning on a warm day at the Coliseum. Greg Gibson's ready. Don't play umpire. The hockey style mask on. When bounce to Fryman, nice big hop. He's got it. And Straley has an 11 pitch first inning. Bottom of the first coming up. No score. Put out there by the manager, Bob Melvin. Lowry in the leadoff spot today. Then Young in center, Donaldson back to the third spot. Cespedes in hitting cleanup. Fryman, Kayaspo, Norris, Choice, and Suzuki. So a couple of catchers in the game. One of them is DH. -ing. And a left hander that the A's have never seen. They'll see him for the first time today. And that is Brett Oberholzer. And he's a youngster acquired in a trade. Scott mentioned last night in the Rays, but. He's a youngster who has pitched so well. You have to wonder why he didn't come up earlier because he's been very good. Pitched a shutout in his last start, and you have to have broad shoulders to have a name that long. But uh, seemed to put it on nicely. But he is pitching very well for the Astros. The defense for Houston: Carter, Barnes, Crow in the outfield; Dominguez, VR, El Tuve, Wallace on the infield, and Matt Pagnazzi is the catcher. So our first look at Brett Overholzer. Kepi is not overpowering fastball, low 90s, two and four seam fastball. He also throws a curve and a, and a change up, but kind of deceptive. Talked to Alan Lashby, great catcher, now broadcast for the Astros, and he seems to think a little deception because his fastball is not that overpowering. Some of the Mariners players were talking after they were shut out that there was just something about his delivery, how he hides the ball, and all of a sudden the 90 92 is on top of them very quickly. And that one is lined to right field, but right there is Trevor Crow. And that's out number one. Here's today's AT&T U-verse rewind. Well, here it is. Overholzer, it was a four-hit shutout against the Seattle Mariners. So he was impressive in his last start. And it's not the only impressive start DC has had. He's looking at the big league starts for Oberholzer. He threw seven shutout innings at Baltimore. 
and then followed that up with seven shutout innings at home against the Red Sox. That's two very good offensive teams. And the Astros won both of those games. So come on, Dan Straley, yeah. because Straley shuts out the Astros, and it's a pitcher's duel. And Straley, of course, meeting the Tigers and the Rangers in back to back starts, while this youngster has pitched well, should be one of those good outings. And that one is driven toward the gap in left center field. Nobody's going to get it. Chris Young will get to second base with a one out double. Ninety mile hour fastball down the middle and it did not fool Chris Young. No deception here, just a pretty good pitch to hit and see why crushed it in the left center. And what he did last night with the bunt, the push bunt towards second base, and this solid swing could be a great month of September for the A's center fielder today. Coco gets the night of the afternoon off, but what a great swing by Chris Young splitting the gap in the left center towards the Xfinity side. See, Chris Carter couldn't get to it in the 15th double for Chris Young. Exmo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So Donaldson steps in, hitting 296 with 21 home runs and 82 RBIs. What a night last night for Donaldson. Spoke with him after the game. It's always fun to hear players kind of take you through their thought process during a certain at bat. He hit the home run on a first pitch breaking ball last night. And you ask him about it. I always enjoy hearing what they say. And he said, hey, the guy threw me a first pitch breaking ball earlier in the game. So now you kind of get an idea of the thought process of Josh Donaldson. He's a smart hitter, and I think that's it. Biggest attribute any player can have, and, and to not just be somebody can show up and swing the bat. Bounces out there, and here's that. Watch the first pitch he sees. He had a bat last night, and what he does with the bumper on the curveball, and he stayed right in the middle of the plate. And of course, he got a similar curveball next to bat, but he did not swing. But well, that turned out to be such a big home run. It did expand the lead for the Athletics to seven to four, and it turned out to be a huge blow because of the added runs the A's were able to put up. They scored in four different innings last night. Three times they put a two spot, and Josh Donaldson right now going to the bat rack, the helmet rack, thinking about what Oberholzer just did to get him out, and he'll remember it the next time. So two outs here, Cespedes. You know, Ray talking about Donaldson when he mentioned Humber and the first pitch breaking ball. And I said uh, he had thrown him a pitch like that earlier in the game. That was not the, he had thrown him a first pitch breaking ball earlier in the season. Right, right. Remember Humber, I think, started a game against the A's, or he has pitched against the A's a couple times this year. So it wasn't even earlier in the game, it was earlier in the year. So that makes it even more interesting. Well, I, one of the great things that his video coordinator at Roden does, I mean, he's got all that on video. And I was talking to Adam today, and he had Oberholzer pitching against the Mariners in kind of a rapid fire. And so hitters can actually watch the delivery. They've never seen this young man, so at least they get a chance to do that. Well, the same in the case of Donaldson. They can load up some of the things that he has done against certain pitchers in the past, and maybe that was an instance where he remembered. Adam Rodner had it on the uh, DVD to verify it and at least thought about it when he came up and saw the similar curveball. That's what he throws. So, not overpowering velocity, but what it sounds like is he's around the plate, pretty good control. And and he gets Cespedes swinging on a pitch in the dirt, and the A's strand Chris Young at second base. No score after one.
first. The Minnesota Twins in town. It's a 105 p.m. game. The specialty beers will be available throughout the ballpark. 10,000 fans will also receive an Oktoberfest beer stein. It's courtesy of Sox. Special field level ticket package will include a brewmaster meat and greet and a ceramic stein. Stein there. You can visit OaklandAthletics.com slash Oktoberfest to get all the information. Hope you're here to attend. When the Minnesota Twins pay their only visit to the Coliseum in late September. They will be here. The A's will be going to Twin Cities next week and then Twins will be back for the final weekend of the regular season here. Coliseum. Castro Dominguez and Carter for the Astros top of the second inning. Australia went three up three down in the first. Wow. It's good lunch. Oh. How many people is that for? That's my question. One. <laughs> That's full after a hungry person. Oh, there it is. I can see it down there too. Over by the A's on deck circle. Can't beat diamond level. It's a feast down there for nine innings. If, nine you, innings. if you choose. And last night, three hours and 20 some odd minutes <laughs> for nine minutes. Now, the length of games, you can consume a lot of food during the period of time down in the diamond level seats. Well, you don't see that a lot at the Coliseum. A little fan, mini fan, as it is more. Castro drives one to deep center, but plenty of room for Young. Renovate Park against the Astros, his first start. Of course, after the start, he was sent back to AAA because Bartolo Colon was activated. But Dan Straley, what a memorable game for him and a memorable day for me because my daughter Lindsay got married on that day. So it was a special day all the way around. So that date you'll always remember, Dan Straley. <laughs> you and Dan, you had something in common. Well, and speaking of that, September 24th will always be a great day because our daughter Nikki was born on that day when we clinched the Western Division, 1975. So, all right, where so are we in September 24th? I got to check that. <laughs> We're in Anaheim. So, Anaheim. Okay. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday night in Anaheim. But it's a work day for Nikki, so it's uh, she'll celebrate her birthday then. But special times during baseball season. And the good folks, Comcast Sportsnet California, allowing me to be there on a special day. And thank you, partner, for what did I do? Call that great game. Oh, that's right. It's play by the bullpen. Use the cap. Now he's gonna find a good candidate. It's a great, great shot. <laughs> Let's try to figure out who's going to give the souvenir to. Donaldson charges, throws in time to get Dominguez. Two gone here in the second inning. We always like to see that, and we see it often. Third base will break, break in front of a shortstop, and there's nothing against the shortstop. It's just a slow hit ball. Josh Donaldson alertly moving in front of Lowry and making the play on the run because if the ball gets to the shortstop, it might be enough time for the hitter to beat it out. But Donaldson cutting in front of Lowry and a six foot eight target always makes it nice to throw to first base. First pitch to Chris Carter. 220 with 27 home runs, 74 RBIs for Carter and He's too afraid in series. Same way Chris Carter slightly pulls open. Opens up, pulls the hands in, and that's why sometimes you try to pitch him in a little bit more just to show the outside part of the plate eventually. But if you make a mistake inside, we've seen some shots hit by Chris Carter down the left field line, both with the A's and the Astros. Did not go. 
though, so the count is three and one. Carter, 17 of his 27 home runs this year have been hit on the road, which is pretty impressive, simply because Houston's ballpark would be ideal for a right handed pole hitter. So when Carter hits, Astros win more. That's not a big surprise. And a breaking ball. Carter swings and misses. Six up, six down for Straley. They're going to the bottom of the second. Fryman to lead it off. No score. Hammer Gold Pro, be a hero. Dan Stranded, what a great pitch on three and two. Remember, score this game. Dan Stranded with big Chris Carter up on a three or two and one. He threw him a slider. He took football three. Threw him a fastball, foul back three and two. He gets a sign from Kurt Suzuki. Watch the rotation on the same pitch that Chris Carter laid off. Here comes a slower slider, kind of a chase out of the strike zone. Watch the bat speed. Chris Carter way out in front, strike three on a three two. So Dan Strader, the important thing there, he gets the sign from his catcher, no hesitation. He throws and throws a strike, even though it was out of the strike zone, but he got the swing and miss. Belief in your catcher. Belief that when he puts the sign down, you don't think twice about it, you just throw it. So a little more on the slider. Profile of Dan Straley. See what happens. It's tough to hit. I mean, it's oh. a good tight slider. I mean, it's his best pitch. I don't think there's any doubt. Absolutely. And to be able to throw it around the plate, three and two, hitter's going to be thinking fastball. You saw the strike percentage, 66%, which is a little bit above the league average for the ability to throw sliders for strikes. I think also just as important he's starting to throw them away from the hitter. Not necessarily throw them towards the middle of the plate and getting hit hard. Kind of a. As he said earlier and we talked about how he had been throwing so many strikes he had to learn how to throw pitches. That weren't strikes out of the strike zone. If you try to get hitters to chase. Him. Three and one out of Fryman. I asked go to follow and then Norris here in the bottom of the second inning. So full count to Big Nate. A couple of games going on. Another wild one at Yankee Stadium. The Red Sox are leading the Yankees 13 to 9 in the ninth inning. 
runs in bunches in that series. It's not been a good series for the Yankees. Strike three called on the inside corner. Second strikeout for Oberhoser. But if you're not overpowered with a fastball, not surprising that he goes inside at about 90. Tagnazzi moving inside on the corner and he just throws the ball right to the inside. And watch Nate Fryman. When you see that with a hitter, he's hoping it's not a strike because once he commits to back off the plate, buckle the knees a bit, he's already committed and no chance to make contact. Kayaspo, the second baseman today, hitting 258. White Sox and the Orioles are playing in Baltimore and the White Sox just took a three to two lead in the top of the 10th inning. It's the Yankees and the Orioles. Right on the heels of the Rays for that second wild card spot. The Rangers and the Angels will play tonight. Six o'clock start in Anaheim. Holland for the Rangers, Richards for the Angels, and the Angels won last night six to five. They had to hang on and win. One and two to Kayaspo. Setting up inside. And that one and hits something and scoots toward the on deck circle for the Ash. That's not a hit Kayaspo. I don't think he would have reacted the way he did if it had been off his kneecap, but must have been hit hard off a shin guard or Agnazi's catcher. Seeing two pitches today, and one of the goals of every pitch is to repeat his mechanics. And seeing it from Dan Strait in the first two innings, overholds her kind of the same. Almost looks like Mark Mulder, the way he's set up and brings the hands down and then delivers. It's going to hang up in left center field. Barnes has it. So two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. Right in the seventh position. Designated here. Remember when the Astros traded Barry. Michael Bourne Morris. to the Atlanta Braves? They got a package of players back, and one of them was Oberholzer. And at the time, which was but at the trade deadline 2011, Oberholzer was in double A. It's great scouting. You know? It's what you have to do, you want to do, and if you well, give up a quality player, because Pence also uh, left the Astros, they, they unloaded a lot of players. So sometimes, which well, most of the time, trades like that are made for a proven player in exchange for minor leaguers. Obviously, you don't. You've never heard of these minor leaguers, but after a couple of years, guys make it to the big leagues, and all right, that's when the scouting comes in. Noble rolls are 24 years old. A swing and a miss by Derek Norris, so the count is 0 2. Norris hitting 233 with eight homers, 26 runs batted in. I actually saw earlier in the season when Bob Melvin would have both catchers and John Jay so at times with DH and Derek Norris would catch. So he had both catchers in the line at the same time. Sometimes you do take a chance, but the DH can always remove, be removed, and, and put in. The game if necessary, but now of course the A's with three catches, all three used last night. To a two now to Norris. All right handed hitters in the lineup. Switch hitters. Foul straight back. Count remains two and two with Michael Choice waiting in the on deck circle.
check swing by Norris. We talk about the ball carrying a little bit better during daytime baseball, and it's pretty evident. With the ball that Castro hit straight away center field, while it carried okay, it went to the warning track, but flags in right field view corner. They're a little bit still. They were blowing a little bit left field. There's slight breeze. But if you pull it, if you pull a ball, it's going to carry a lot better. Straight away center would be ideal for pitchers to try to get hitters to hit that direction. And I would say, evidently, at Yankee Stadium, the last three games counting today, has been pulling a lot of pitches because that is a monster from left center to right center. But down the lines, directly to left center, left field, and right field. Very enticing, but a lot of runs in three games so far. They have another one tomorrow at Yankee Stadium. And another 2 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that was a good changeup from Oberholzer. So he strikes out a couple in a three up, three down, second inning. No score after two. Well, it's coming up tomorrow. A's Fiesta today, driven by Chevrolet. It is tomorrow, Sunday, at 10 a.m. in parking lot A. Chevrolet Ride and Drive, live Lucha Libre Wrestling, and a Yoenis Cespedes autograph session. Should be a great day tomorrow. Free game and in game entertainment will feature Latin music, dancers, and more. For tickets and information, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash Fiesta. Wallace swings at the first pitch. It'll pop up to shallow right field. Kiaspo gets back, and that's out number one. And we always have to remember a beautiful day, sun. Not a cloud in the sky, bright, bright sun, and not much of a background. The ball goes up in the air. So when in doubt, you hit a ball in the air, you run hard. Yes, indeed. Just in case it might drop, and we've seen the A's have some problems in day games this uh, home stand, but the visitors seem to have a few more. It was a bright day. To say if not all players will have sunglasses for the catcher. I think Pat Nazi's wearing sunglasses as the Astros catcher. Not the sunglasses we've seen in the past, the old flip down glasses, but still need as much protection and help as you can get. Well, yeah, at least. These players are wearing the glasses as opposed to having them sitting on top of the brim of their cap. Bill of the cap, I should say. And you know, one thing we've never seen when that has happened when there's a fly ball hit to the action, take the sunglasses off the bill and put them on there while they're trying to catch them. Well, I don't no, think that has that, that's not going to happen. Seems like it's after they drop the ball, then oh, I think I'll put on my sunglasses. But you have to be prepared on a sunny day like today. Even Dan Swaley would like to wear sunglasses. Foul 
that by Matt Pagnazzi. Remember back in the uh, let's say 88, 89, one of those years when the A's played the Red Sox and Roger Clemens started pitcher, pitcher for the Red Sox came out with eye bike under his eyes as a pitcher. I've never seen a pitcher. It's like he put on war paint. Well, what was his reason for that? He got ejected in a couple of third innings. In the hole is Lowry. Throws on the run, and they got Pegnazzi. Nice play by the shortstop Jet Lowry. Okay, I'll say it. If it weren't a catcher, it's probably <laughs> yeah. a harder play for Jet Lowry, but still a great play by the A shortstop mm -hmm. throwing on the run. Pegnazzi just thinking Brandon if I had not caught Bond. all these years, finally get the big leagues out ahead of an infield hit. Not able to get it, but great stretch. Great play. Which is always appreciative of excellent defensive play. So two outs for Brandon Barnes. Australia has retired the first eight. Barnes hitting 244 with seven homers, 38 RBIs. I asked Brandon Barnes about uh, the ejection last night. He said, I was yelling at the bat rack. And I had my back to home plate and I was yelling, but not at anybody. I was yelling into the bat rack, but uh, got ejected anyway. That's why I came out of the dugout and said, I didn't say anything. Not directly to Mr. Porter. I guess that's a possibility. Sometimes it's nice to talk to something that you know is not going to talk back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the old bat rack. Yeah. Just a bit outside, and Barnes has a two out walk. Now Brandon Barnes, watch the left elbow. Now he said he was turning away from the pitch. And then I said, no, Brandon, I think you turned in, but watch it was the elbow right stick there. It out. He <laughs> stuck it out. And even his manager is telling Eduardo Perez and Alan Porter. Said no, it should be called a ball. And then after he struck out on the next pitch, he yelled at the bat rack, and I guess Mr. Porter heard somebody. Yeah, he definitely stuck his left elbow. Yeah, there's no question. So he's talking to Batman. Right? Well. Video does not lie, folks. He had a continuation of the conversation <laughs> after the bat rack. <laughs> Maybe the initial scream was into the bat rack, but afterwards a selective memory. Well, you know, the distance between home plate and the dugout, some umpires can read lips. That's important. You don't have to necessarily hear. But he did say, Barnes said that he had a few words for Alan Porter as he left home plate after he struck out, but it was more or less that. You know, it's all on you and etc. But it was an ejection and uh, just had to maneuver some guys in the outfield in the absence of Barnes. One of the things that Dan Straley and we have seen, and this is a perfect example, gets two outs, great defensive play, and then a five pitch walk to the ninth place hitter, and then a first pitch ball to VR, the leadoff hitter. And it'd be nice to get half. At least to have a very quick inning after, especially getting the first two guys out. Barnes has a pretty good lead. He's got 10 steals on the year, and that one is lying toward left center field. Cespedes is able to cut it off. Barnes will go to third. VR is going to try for second, and he is out. Wow, thank you. So Cespedes throws out VR at second base for the third out.
assist as he throws out VR trying to stretch a single into a double. And I think what it might happen here, Kai, but maybe VR thought Cespedes was going to throw to third, but he was rounding first like he was going for two. That was a surprising thing because Cespedes just kind of casually threw the ball in. Perfect strike. And there's guys were waiting by the tag. Jerry Lane, a little bit delayed, maybe to make sure that Kaispa held on, but he tagged him clearly right there. Stayed on the tag. And Jerry Lane hesitated, made the call. But that was an ill advised attempt by VR to stretch it into a, a double when it's going to be first and third with two outs. And actually, the Astros doing something because a two out walk, two out hit. Cespedes again with a great throw. Michael Choice to lead it off, and he bounces one right side. Wallace was playing way off the bat. Flips to the pitcher, and that's out number one. Well, the, the best play, actually, I don't think position. you heard you, Dan, but the, the best play number is exactly what Cespedes, because with the two outs and the runner from first running on contact, he was going to make the third easily, especially the ball in the gap. You're just hopeful that Cespedes was not going to try to throw out Barnes as he was going to third because he wouldn't have had a chance to get him. So the best play was to throw to second and just happen to get the aggressive, over aggressive VR trying to stretch it into a double. It did look like Cespedes was thrown yeah, to third yeah, and then exactly. right at the last second he decided to throw it to yeah. second. Which makes the throw even more impressive. Because it was flat footed, just a, oh, by the way, I'll throw to second. And that's such a strong arm anyway. And it showed on that one. First pitch to Kurt Suzuki in first strike with 89 mile an hour fastball. Suzuki seven for 21 since being traded to the athletics. Kurt Suzuki actually is doing what he did prior to being traded. He started swinging the bat a lot better. His left hand got well, gripped the bat, swing better. He's continued that, rejoining the club. That game is now a final at Yankee Stadium. The Red Sox 13. And the Yankees nine. So the Red Sox have won the first three games of that series. And Boston is kind of running away with the American League East. And two pitches roll fair and Dominguez kicked it. So it went right over the bag. Alan Porter, the third base umpire. Called it fair and Dominguez dropped it. Like Dominguez peaked, looked up a little bit, maybe to see where Suzuki was as he was running down the line. Got in on the hands of Suzuki and just peaked right at the last instant as the ball right over the bag, just to the foul side, but it went over the bag. But there's, watch the head of Dominguez right there. When you look up, you take your eyes off the baseball and just enough to peak. Cespedes did it. In the opener of this series on Thursday night, you look up, it's amazing how the ball always finds a way to miss your glove. And that happens. So it's an E5, runner at first for Lowry. Lowry takes a strike. So the Red Sox. In the first three games of that series in New York, they've scored 34 runs on 45 hits. They've hit nine home runs. So the Red Sox have won eight out of their last nine. They now have an eight game lead over the second place Rays in the East. Napoli hit a couple of home runs today. He's got 21. Johnny Gomes hit a home run. He's got 12. What a turnaround for the Red Sox, huh? Why? You mentioned the name Johnny Gomes. Shock, nice. shock, huh? <laughs> well, Johnny, every place he goes, the club wins. And they're doing it again in Boston after the worst season in many, many years last year, Red Sox. The two pitch is inside. 
So they will wrap up that series tomorrow in the Bronx. Well, the Yankees cannot be happy with that. No. He's now three games behind the Rays for the second wild card spot. You know, the Yankees might have been better not to get the players back healthy. <laughs> they played well for a while, but now ran into a buzzsaw in the Boston Red Sox. Red Sox 87 and 57 is now their record. And you know, the schedule makers, it's great. Interdivisional play with uh, September baseball. Lowry pokes it, past the diving via, and that's a base hit. Second hit for the A's, two on and one out. It's amazing the acceleration from Jed Lowry on a pitch that looks like it's going to be out of the strike zone. Watch him just go down and take it right back up the middle. Off speed pitch. Probably out of the strike zone as Pagnazzi looked like he was going to try to block the ball, but diving effort by VR could not get it. So the air with one out, allowing Suzuki to reach, and now Jed Lowry with a two strike base hit up the middle. Chef Rodney has arrived and is not stuck as Fernando was in the visiting dugout. Is that okay? Well, looks like a, some type of Polish sausage that's about two feet long. Um, they deserve to. First pitch to Young is low. So one and zero opportunity for the A's. They had a runner at second with one out in the first inning. And they did not score. Well, a mistake was made to allow Suzuki to reach. Could have been the second out with Lowry. Nobody on base. What the A's trying to do is take advantage, and as we have often talked about, when there are good pitching matchups, this is last night. Kurt Chris Young did something that. Shocked the world. Drove in a run with a push bunt with a shift. Nobody to the right side except the first baseman. And was talking to him, I said, pretty tough pitch. He said, yeah, slider running inside, but yet he said the whole right side was open, took the chance, did it, and turned out to be a huge play to score a run. Double his first at bat today. And that one is lined to foul right over the A's bullpen. But if a pitcher or a team makes a mistake and it's a pitcher's duel, then you definitely want to try to take advantage, and the A's are trying to do it in this inning. So Young behind in the count, one and two. Suzuki at second, Lowry at first, and the pitch is driven toward right center field. Coming in is Crow, and he's going to get there. So Young is retired, and that's out number two here in the third, and that gets us to our cold hard facts. Don't you buy me. Lowest Donaldson. American League ERA since July 31st. It's Brett Overholzer. Well, we told you he was pitching well. 1.98 since July 31st. How about that? Pretty good company, yeah. also. Parker's been terrific for a long time. We saw Martin Perez on the game, the only game the Rangers beat the A's. Perez was outstanding. Of course, Scherzer. A's could have, should have beaten him last Thursday. And Josh Donaldson, once again, as you mentioned, Cott moved from second to third in the batting order. He has hit third. Several times this year. He likes the third spot. Big opportunity for him to try to come through with a hit. Play the A's first run. I'd say with those numbers, runners in slow position, that he tries hard to drive them in. 336 with five home runs. 56 runs batted in with runners in scoring position. 
A long meeting at the mound with the infielders. Now Wallace came over from first base, but he was looking in the dugout for some reason. I don't know. Trying to think about, but you know, the first and second two outs, I would think the main objective is trying to get the third and not do anything <laughs> other than just do that. I don't know what they could have been looking in for. Donaldson grounded out to third in the first inning. And in the first pitch is cued foul. He got a first pitch slider and he rolls it toward the Astros dugout. Down a slider, maybe that changeup. Yeah. As I look at the miles per hour, 81 miles per hour, that's been about the speed of his changeup. Yeah, it's pretty much a two and four seam fastball curveball, the kind of the bigger break, and then the changeup. But the changeup comes out of his hand very, very well because it fools the hitters as he's done twice with the strikeouts. And that one close, called ball one and one. Well, if you're Agnazi, you're Pitchers him. Where is it? What's wrong with that? Well, because that was a pretty good pitch. Was it low? Had to be off the plate if anything. There's a shot to right. Base hit. We're going to have a play. They're going to hold up the runners. And now the back runner, Lowry, is going to be caught in the rundown. In, and yeah. Suzuki is going to head home. The throw to the plate is there. The tag is applied. And that's a base running mistake by the athletic Cespedes. Or make that Lowry, excuse me, just kept running. So the out is recorded at home. And the A's do not score. Josh Donaldson did an excellent job as he usually does with a fastball going opposite field. It was hit too hard. Crow charges the ball, and Mike Gallego alertly held up Suzuki. But I think what happened, Kipe, Jed Lowry thought there was going to be a play at the plate, and at times, if there is, tries to draw a throw. You round the bag aggressively to draw a throw, but he did not see that Kurt Suzuki was held up at third, and unfortunately ran into the third out. But while it's a good play. But once Kurt Suzuki is held, that's when Jed Lowry at second has to be watching and making sure he stops also because Brett Wallace did cut it off. And at least uh, it was Kurt Suzuki making the final out and not Jed Lowry. At least he tried to score. So if you're Lowry, what should you be looking at? Just the lead runner? Lead runner and third base coach because third base coach went in doubt and the ball behind you, which the ball was in right field. And Two outs and, and again, Mike Gallegos is usually very aggressive as a third base coach will send the runner, but he would have been out by 20 feet. Yeah. 
He so did the right thing, no question, by holding it. But, but uh, you know, if you're a runner, you have to be alert. You cannot have your head down. You have to be looking at the third base coach, looking at the lead runner, like you said. He will determine what you're going to do. If he's going to try to score it, then continue because you might draw a throw. El Tuve swings at a pitch in the dirt, and that is strikeout number two for Straley. Uh, like I said, at least Kurt Suzuki was now the one who's tagged out. The worst thing would have been Trevor for Suzuki Crow. to try to score, but really he had no place to go. Pagnazzi able to block him off the plate, and it was the third out. I think his foot got in there, Ray. Got under his Yeah, I think he got in there. <laughs> Wishful thing. Crow bunts it. Suzuki throws, and they just got Trevor Crow. Nice play by Kurt Suzuki. Well, you're going to see a great play by catcher. The only way he can make this play. Great bunt, great speed by the hitter. Watch Suzuki. Look at the play. The 360. If he goes around, you hear me say it all the time, if he tries to go around to make the play, if he does that, he won't make it. He does the reverse, the 360, picks it up, momentum, picks up the target at first, and makes a strong throw. That is the only way he's going to make the play on a fast runner. Even Greg Gibson saying, nice job. Zook. Yeah, it's good, good, good play, Zook. Umpires say that? No. Well, he might only say it if it's speeding up the game. Yeah. But no, that, that was a great play. Because I think a lot of times, guys try to kind of go around so they can keep a better eye on the, on the target at first base. And you can imagine by picking up the ball with your back to the first baseman, you have to hesitate slightly to make sure you're not throwing basically a moving target. At least it would feel like that with the way you're turning around. Oh, and two to Jason Castro. Castro hit a fly ball to center field in the second inning. Swing and a miss with a fastball. Strikeout number three for Dan Stralin. Bottom of the fourth coming up, but it'll be Suspidus, Fryman, and Kiasco. No score. Which three Oakland A's third baseman have had 20 home runs and 80 RBIs in a season? Three of them. Well, I like the Oakland A's part because that means 68 to the present. Got to put the captain in there. 
We know Donaldson's in there. I don't think Carney ever hit 20. That was hit 300. Uh -huh. Roche has only did it with the Yankees. <laughs> he saved his for the big, the st big stage, the Bronx. Eric Chavez. Great. There's your three. Oh, I think we got it. You're good. Wayne Gross. He had a couple big years, yeah. right? Absolutely. Wayne Gross. Well, under a Billy Boy, stole bases. Everybody stole bases under Billy Martin. Cespedes, Fryman, and Kaspo here in the bottom of the fourth inning, no score. Both teams have had base runners thrown out on the bases. For the A's, it was Suzuki at home. For the Astros, it was VR at second base. And that one's driven to left. Carter's going back. And that baby's gone. One to nothing. The A's lead on the Cespedes home run. Change up, and that was all arm strength for the strong man, the other assessments. Because that was crushed, high, towering. You know, similar last night, Kafti hit the ball towards the end of the bat, then he flew out to left center. But I think uh, his power and daytime helped a little bit. Tough play, and it's going to fall. Ryman drops the single in the right center. Well, watch a great swing on an 80 mile hour changeup from Yohannes Cespedes. And sometimes you can fool a hitter, sometimes you can't. And while it was not a great pitch, I think Oberholzer knew it. Struck him out on a changeup that was in the dirt, but the deception, look at the infield shift. That's how you hit through a shift, you hit over it. Because it was crushed. On a belt high 80 mile hour. It was almost like Mike Gallego throwing to Cespedes in the home run derby. Kind of middle in about belt high. And he crushed that one just like he did the 32 in New York. So here's Kaspo. Great to see him swing the bat so well. Chili Davis hit 350 by himself, so he had a great career hitting home runs, and his team doing the same thing. Did second half last year, and did it again this second half. Wallace coming over, but it's into the seats. One to Kias, but with Fryman aboard. And the A's now with a one nothing lead. Just a little low, but a close pitch. One and one the count. Run number 22 for Cespedes, one away from what he hit last year. Down the line, but foul by Kaspo. Well, first in against Cespedes, Cap. Watch his changeup. Swung, great pitch in the dirt. Cespedes way out on the front foot, strike three. Second and bat, changeup, 80 miles per hour, mistake, home run. And over her, uh, over, Holzer knew it. As he would not look, he just heard the sound, knew the location, and figured what the result was going to be. And even Pagnazzi, the catcher, watching his eyes follow the flight of the baseball. Almost looked like the second changeup. Like he threw it maybe a little harder. Maybe that 
kept it up a little well, bit. Well, and, and sometimes that's, that happens when you try to overthrow a change up. You make a mistake. If you throw it with the deception, the arm speed coming out of the hand looking like a fastball, it's going to bounce like it did in the first inning. And that one driven right center field. Crow on the run, and he gets there to make the catch. Well, that's both. Pretty good at bat right there. He lines one to right center. Other than the ball that fell in front of Crow on the big Nate Fryman swing. Crow's got some nice Number 36. Nice ball. Ball hangs up and gives the outfielders the good speed a chance to make the play. Crow, great lateral move and able to cut the ball off and make the play. So he's showing the speed in the outfield that he's shown on the base pass. So one out for Norris. Norris struck out to end the second inning. This one's popped up foul. We mentioned earlier we got a visit, a visit from Chef Rodney. He gave us some, some goodies to test out. The home run bratwurst, which is a one pound sausage with bacon onions, mustard sauce. And you can get it on Friday the 20th and Saturday the 21st. So next home stand. Yeah. At the Coliseum on Friday or Saturday at the the Bar and Grill Restaurant. You can also get it at the Picnic Plaza. Tell me more. So you let us try that out again on the 20th and the 21st of the next homestand. You can get the home run bratwurst. It's about two feet long, and I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, you almost need a suitcase to carry it. <laughs> and you can share it because yes, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could probably have this entire road right through there. Everybody could take a bite. No of that question. They, it of could feet. feed three to four. Yeah. So check that out. Next home stand Friday and Saturday, 20th and 21st. Also, the Barn Grill Restaurant, Wild Boar Strip Loin. That looks pretty good. I'm surprised you haven't <laughs> nestled into that baby just yet. How about that? Barbecue Plaza, they're doing some barbecue. Oof, that's good. So we appreciate Chef Rodney bringing it up, and we want to let everybody know to head over to the bar, bar and grill restaurant. Come out maybe a little bit earlier. And get yourself a nice dinner. Well, I mean, also like to tell Chef Rodney, don't be a stranger. Yeah, well, once a homestand would be ideal, if not twice. But we appreciate him coming up. And Norris swings and misses, so that's the second time Norris has struck out. So two outs here in the fourth. Hey, did you miss the last episode of All A's or you just want to watch it again? Log on to CSNCalifornia.com for all your favorite segments available on demand right now. This is both Jerry Blevins and Sean Doolittle tour the Twitter offices in San Francisco. CSNCalifornia.com, your online home for authentic Bay Area sports. Other players and people might be jealous of the guys taking that uh, tour. That'd be fun. Did you know it was in San Francisco? Yes, I did. I should have known that you would know. You're knowledgeable about a lot of Oh, things. yeah. Boy, oh, boy. Am I ever. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge without the license. That's a good one. Some people know a lot. Some people act like they know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Probably best to be somewhere in the middle. Well, the, the great Craig Breslow, and you know, we can always remember the smartest man in baseball. Yeah. He would always say, I would ask the question because I figured the people who would ask me didn't know the answer anyway, so as long as it made it sound like I knew what I was talking about, it's great. They thought it worked, and more times than not, he knew what he was talking about. Change up grit by this lefty is good. You can see the circle change up, and it's the thumb and the index finger, but he has the three fingers. The the middle ring and little finger kind of wrapped around spread over the baseball that the deception is there arm speed right over the top like his fastball when he pulls the string because of the grip reduces the velocity three and one now to Michael choice so he works off that fastball 64 percent 
but that allows him to throw a less than overpowering fastball at about 90 91 because of the great change. It seems like it's 100 101. Good pitch there, and now it's three and two. See, there's a change up. Great count to throw it on three and one, and not be surprised if Michael Choice gets another one. This at 82, but he threw it hard with a hard delivery, but because of the grip, could not throw it at 90 miles per hour. It's all about grip and arm speed. Because you put two fingers on baseball, it's going to be thrown much harder. The fewer fingers you put there, the better it's going to be. Fryman runs on 3 2. It's popped up foul territory. And Brett Wallace has it side retired. Cespedes with home run number 22 on the year, a solo shot. So as we head to the fifth inning, the A's now lead one hey, to nothing. With which three Oakland A's third basemen have had 20 home runs and 80 RBIs in a season? Sal Bando did it five times. Eric Chavez did it five times. Josh Donaldson has done it this year. Chavez, that's a good call. Because you remember it because he broke up the perfect game last night. You had him did. on your mind. Did. He, Chavez, he ruined the night, the dream yeah. for Yosemiro Petit. Xavi, five time gold glove winner, five or six, something like that consecutively. Great third baseman, great hitter, and a great person. His brother Casey, down in the A's bullpen. Another Xavi is down there. Jesse, A's reliever. But shut down innings for Dan Straley, looking for another one. Especially, it looks like Real is going to be a premium this, this game because of two very good pitchers. Dominguez, Carter, and Wallace. That's yeah, got that feel of the game. And it is the fifth inning already. There's Casey. Close your eyes and listen to Casey and say, there's Eric. Hard working man, Casey Chavez. He probably knows the pitchers better than the pitchers themselves because he warms up all of the pin catcher. And Warm up the pitchers, starting pitchers, until we get loose, and then the starting catcher will take over. But Casey does all the work with the relief pitchers, getting them ready. That one looped to left. Cespin is coming in. He dives. He can't get it. And it rolls past him just enough for Dominguez to go to second with a double. When in doubt, you break back. Don't try to make a diving play. And not only take a chance of hurting yourself, but Let's hope he did not. But he definitely broke back on the big swing by Dominguez. And even with his speed, could not recover. But it 
been a lot better just to concede the hit, hold him to a single, but this dive started very early with absolutely very little chance to make the play. But it's all about the first move, and unfortunately, the first move was back, and boy, he banged his right shoulder into the turf hard. Arm, shoulder, rolled over. Well, you always hold your breath when yeah. an outfielder dives. So runner at second and nobody out, and here's Carter. Slider, swing and miss. Carter struck out in the second inning, one of three strikeouts by Straley in the ball. Will be next, and then Matt Pagnazzi here in the fifth inning. Got a couple of pitches to try to get Chris Carter to chase a bad pitch, chase a slider, maybe get the strikeout that he's looking for. Got a breaking ball, but there's a hanger, not where he wanted it. <laughs> You're lucky when you make a pitch like that and get away with it. Kind of backed up a little bit for Dan Straley, but not where he wanted. Zuki wanted it down and away. That stayed right in the heart of the plate, maybe inner half of the plate, but Chris Carter knew it might be a strike, so at least he fouled it. Not throwing the hard one to get him to chase it. And he went with a fastball and he threw it by him on the inside half. So Carter strikes out for the second time. Now that is what an out, not a productive out, which is even better. Straley, while he's missing his target a little bit, still a very, very good pitch. And maybe Carter was thinking another slider. Got the fastball instead and could not catch up. So one out, and here's Wallace. That was strikeout number 189 for Chris Carter. Most in the American League. His 187th was last night, and uh, the two to this afternoon. Two big ones. So, well ahead of Mike Napoli. That's not only the American League, that's the major leagues. Well, one thing pretty consistent about that list, and maybe. David can show it again. There are some home run hitters. Yeah. And that's that's one of those things about hitters when they get a couple of strikes, they do not shorten their swing. There they are again. Well, at least Carter, <laughs> at least he's hitting home runs right. and being a run producer. But look at the rest. Napoli, Alvarez, Davis, and Bruce. Well, they will strike out. They will hit the long ball. They have all hit a lot. Mike Napoli this weekend in New York alone. I right, pop up. Donaldson hustling over and it's just going to drop into the stands. So Owen two to Brett Wallace. Donaldson caught it, <laughs> but he didn't lose it. And Wallace swings at a pitch in the dirt, and that's another strikeout. Well, the A's magazine, if you have not bought one, here's a chance to get a good one. Fifth issue now available, showing showcasing Josh Donaldson and A.J. Griffin. Those are two special players you want to learn a lot about. Features on Jared Parker, Brandon Moss, and of course the A's director of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi. It's always available at team stores or OaklandAthletics.com slash magazine. It's a good one. Josh Donaldson. Great year he is having. Beginning of a great career and all started last year when he came back from Triple A. So here is Matt Pagnazzi, the eighth place hitter who grounded out to short in the third inning. Lowry made a nice play. 
talked about the, the chase slider by Dan Schrader. He just threw one to Wallace down and in and he swung over the pitch. It was in the dirt. And so he is making some good pitches after Dominguez grouped the ball in left field. Nice block by Suzuki. The count is 2 0. The location of the slider down and in. Watch you wrap the slider, throw it hard. There's your chase. You want to try to get him to chase a pitch out of the strike zone. Almost hit him in the right kneecap, but end up swinging over the pitch, blocked by Suzuki, and nice tag. Got him out. So pitch number 70 coming up for Dan Straley. Fastball is high and now it's 3 and 0 with Brandon Barnes in the on deck circle. Ignazi is not looking at Dave Trembley which should indicate one of two things obviously and that is it's automatically a take but also he may be swinging. And it's a strike. Automatic take. I think as a hitter, you should never not look at a third base coach because, in the case of Pagnazzi taking the pitch, at least look down at Dave Trim to go through some signs because it might force a pitcher to throw less than a good strike. That one bounced to Lowry, who scoops it up. And side retired. So Dominguez has a leadoff double, and the Astros do nothing with it. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. One nothing, Aisley. Face celebrating 40 years of bringing it to the plate. Stop by Erickson, enter to win 40 years of free sandwiches with character. It's a hot day in the Bay Area. Suzuki. The Athletics with a 1 0 lead over the Astros in the bottom of the fifth inning. Another day game tomorrow, and it'll be warm again. I'll bring the fan again. Yeah, bring the fan again. We appreciate that. Ray Fossey brought his fan. Got a whole bunch of fans in the stands, over 20,000 of them, but we have a special one in the booth. It creates a nice breeze. Yeah. Days like today, Ray walks around with that fan. Remember when people <laughs> used to walk around with the boom boxes? That's what Ray looked like today. Just fan of his fan. <laughs> This big, big white fan <laughs> over his shoulder. <laughs> it's all right. He's thinking ahead. That's right. He's a veteran, my partner. 
<laughs> he knew it was going to be warm today, so he brought his fan. You know, Feels pretty good. His boom boxes are uh, battery operated. <laughs> I've got a fan that's battery operated, so I can carry it. Yeah. So we don't have a fan up here very often, but we do no. today. 2 0 to Suzuki, followed by Lowry and Young. That one driven to center. Barnes hustling back, and he makes the catch. Suzuki hit it hard. He's retired. And now Lowry at the top of the order. The only run in the game, Suspicious solo home run. Last inning. Number eight, Jed Lowry. Overholzer got away in the third inning when base running prevented the A's from possibly scoring maybe even more than one run, but could not overcome the mistake he made with Cespedes and he leaving a change up in the middle of the plate. Some hitters you can fool with an off-speed pitch regardless of location. Others just react when they see the baseball and Cespedes did it perfectly. Lowry tries to hold up. He can't and it's a strike. Lowry with a line out to right and a base hit. One for two today. He is four for 11 in the series. Now Suzuki getting the 2 0 four seam fastball. And he hit it great, but unfortunately, straight away center field towards the outside part of the plate could not pull it enough to take advantage of the shorter porch and left field. As Brandon Barnes plays a very, very good center field, able to go back in the ball nicely. Breaking ball is inside one and two to Lowry. I think if every hitter could have the center field camera that we have to show the grip in Exmo, maybe they'd never make an out. Great shot of the four seam fastball and the 2 0 thrown by the lefty. So 71 pitches through four and a third innings for Overholzer. And another foul ball. The Orioles got a walk off win tonight today. Over the White Sox. Four to three was the final. And a Orioles win their third in a row. Nice play. Lefty. No right hander. Well, the plaza level. That's, that's a great location. A lot of foul balls on the plaza level. Just down to our right. Another one. They get another one. Over his head. Still loose. Oh, the youngster got it. How about that, Ray? There's an adult male who tried to catch it, bounced off. He reached for it, grabbed it, dropped it again, and a youngster picked it up. Good. And he gave it to the adult. <laughs> Thought it was such a great effort. He did not want to have That's a That's exactly effort. right. But as I look down now, the youngster that gave him the baseball, he already has one. So they may be in uh, foul ball alley right now. Yeah. The hot spot. Lowry shoots one to center, shallow, Barnes in, two outs. MLB.TV celebrates 11 years. Keep up with the pennant races and catch the rest of the season in HD quality. Watch every out of market game on more than 350 connected devices. Visit MLB.TV today. HD quality. HD is everywhere. High definition. I mean, that's that's portion of California with the, the HD quality is just tremendous. And be mobile and still get it in HD quality. So, all good stuff. Great baseball as it's winding down. Three weeks remaining. Three weeks from tomorrow, the regular season will end. 
Jays hope to play much longer into October. Oktoberfest. Young with the double and a fly ball the right field. Doubled with one out in the first but was stranded. Change up for a strike one and one. Michael Choice fouled out in his at bat in the fourth inning as he got back to back change ups three one and three two. So this lefty is really confident with his change up. This one's hit pretty well. Barnes going back, fighting the sun near the wall. He's got it. Nice play by Barnes as he battled that sun, made the catch, and Oberholzer has a three up, three down, fifth inning. season Friday September the 20th after the A's play the twins use the force to enjoy the special Star Wars theme show from the outfield grass and see Star Wars characters roaming the ballpark during the game to purchase a special field level ticket package at OaklandAthletics.com to receive a limited edition Star Wars t-shirt. I bet you're gonna get one. Huh? Yes. Limited edition. Jack will be going to school in a Star Wars t-shirt. <laughs> Straley nursing a one to nothing lead here in the top of the sixth inning. He's allowed two hits. He struck out five. He has walked one. And then Barnes from Orange, California. Wondering where Orange, California is? It's basically Anaheim. It's Anaheim, and he grew up watching the Angels. First games he watched at Angel Stadium. Talk about completely eliminating the word Anaheim and Angels. Yeah, right. That's right. It should be fine. They've pretty much done it already, but uh, even more so. Remember, Bobby Crosby talked about going to watch his favorite team, the Angels, and sitting in the stands, and then ended up playing against them. As the same case with this right-handed hitter. And that one off the foot of Barnes. And they're calling fair ball and they're calling him out. Oh boy. And Barnes just walks walking. back to the deck. Yeah, he's not going to have the same thing about his manager. And kind of a strange play because it left the batter's box very softly, almost as if it did hit something. But not two for two. <laughs> you know what, though? Now, if you're Barnes, you got to argue. Yeah, well, exactly if it hit him. I, I understand, you know, he doesn't want to get kicked out again, but you could argue without getting kicked out. 
Watch the left foot. That hit something. Uh, it hit dirt first. It hit dirt first. Let's see. Uh, he might have hit over the top of his foot. I mean, in that shot, it looked like. And Jerry Lane's going to tell him, Bo, I think it missed his foot. We all discussed it and we all paid attention and we did not see it hit his foot. So it's going to be a 5 3. So I'm glad Donaldson played it out. But you're right, if it. I mean that, that's an arguable point. If, if it definitely hits your foot, you go down. You, you do oh, something. Oh yeah. You you know what? Now, Maddie, you you got to do something. Yeah. Well, he did a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he did. He did a little yeah. bit. You know what though? Umpire didn't say anything. That's right. So if if he doesn't say anything, well then the, the, the play yeah. is still going on. Yeah. I mean, nobody really knows. So if nothing is said, you got you, you got to keep going. You know, look at it and slow down. It looked like it hit and went over the over top his of his foot. foot. And of course, he had the shin guard on his left ankle. But give him credit for going down like it did hit him. But nothing was said. And the way he went back to dug it, it could have been that not want to argue and get ejected again. Oh, two down to the leadoff man, Jonathan Dia. The dirt, watch it hit the dirt there, and then I think it missed his foot. Like I think, yeah, I, I don't think it hit him. I think he looked down and saw that it was staying fair. Yeah. Why not go down? Yeah, the a fly ball to center field and the single. Might have been the biggest play of this game so far instead of first and third and two outs, or maybe even second and third and two outs. We are trying to stretch the single into a double. Remember, in a game in which the Astros were trading four to one, he tried to stretch a single into a double, down three runs, and was taken out of the game by his manager mid game. And of course, put him back in the next day. Played well, but he understood that you got to think a little bit. Well, Similar situation today because he could have gone halfway to second and saw the throw coming in the second and maybe stopped and reversed and gotten back to first. But clearly out at second with a strong throw by Sestens. Another foul ball by Vion. Tuve will be next here in the sixth inning. And with VR and a good base dealer. This is an important guy to get with El Tuve a tough out in the on deck, sir. Well, a couple of strikes on VR. He's attempted to bunt and you would not think he would try it with two strikes. And he is swinging pretty much at everything. It's eighth pitch coming up after starting 0 and 2 with a couple of bunt attempts. Foul ball that went straight back. Australia pitch number 85 coming up, and here it is. And it's bounced to Kayaspo who charges. And big Nate. Handles it, and that's out number two. That's two. Two outs, Nate. <laughs> Hang in there, big fella. Poor guy. But you know, six eight and Kaispo looking up to him and saying, I'm sorry I threw it one to your kneecap. But he threw it hard and then down, and Nate kind of stumbled a little bit. Looked like maybe the right foot of the, the no, arm hit Nate Tryman, and we'll see if the foot gets him. No, he missed it. It just maybe the impact of the bag kind of catapulted. Big Nate and he did all that. Figured it. that's such a great play. That's got to be the third out. I'm going to dug out. It's going to cost you, Nate. <laughs> it's going to cost you. 
Jeez. That big body was standing kind of in the middle of the bag. <laughs> Boy, Kai Espo threw it at his eye level, which is not eye level to Nate. 0 oh, 2 to Jose Altuve. Nate's going back to the dugout. Somebody will be mimicking his great oh, acrobatic yeah. play at first. Got the out though, that's all that matters. The two pitch has popped up shallow right. Choice is under it. He's got it. Six in a row retired by Straley. Bottom of the six coming up. Still one nothing. Hayes lead. Cash Creek's Challenger Slot Tournaments. Free entry daily from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Visit CashCreek.com for more details. 1-0, the A's lead the Astros. It's the bottom of the sixth inning from the Coliseum. Donaldson's going to lead it off. Our Fortright choice for today was a big play in last night's game. It was Josh Donaldson stealing third base, and he's not a big base stealer. Back for Donaldson, that was just his fourth steal of the year. But Ray, that one led directly to a yep. run. Well, I don't think really there's many smarter players than Josh Donaldson. His, he's always in the game. He knows what he's doing. His preparation is unbelievable. And it pays off. And just in a play like last night when he got a red, Times knew everything, although he made it just barely, but at least he did get it to third base. Today Donaldson is grounded out and he is singled. Brett Oberholzer has been good, but just the one mistake to Cespedes. So Oberholzer has struck out four. He's allowed five hits through five innings. He's not walked anybody. That one he queued off the end of the bat. Overholzer picks it up. And Donaldson is retired, and that's out number one. So Cespedes will step in. How many? Left fielder, number 52, Yoel Cespedes. Cespedes home run in the fourth was. Number 22 on the year now has 64 RBIs. Last year, Cespedes had 23 homers and 82 RBI. First pitch off speed, Cespedes swings and misses. Everything soft to Cespedes, and if it's in the right location, it might be a good pitch. A 
couple of youngsters squaring off today. Both have been good. Would not say it's been a pitcher strike zone either today. No. From Greg Gibson. It's been a little tight. Yeah, compared to Alan Porter last night, uh, what a difference. Oh, Larry today, the sunshine, the bright, bright sun, high sky. Well, 80 mile an hour change up, you make a mistake with it, this is what can happen. Sespedes just very strong, kept going, kept going, very deep in left center. In the count here, one and two. Seven in a row retired by Brett Oberholzer. Lefty kicks. As that curveball kind of sweeps inside to Suspidus. Had a little bit better pitch to hit there, and it was off speed again. So Oberholzer are really serving Cespedes a lot of off speed pitches. And what's impressive about that, he gave up a home run on the changeup, yet he's staying with it. He's off, and the count is now full. Wrapped foul off the tarp down the third baseline. Crowd this afternoon, twenty thousand three hundred and forty. Two zero three four zero. One fastball outside corner. Says, but it's took. But let's see what this lefty does against uh, Cespedes. They're playing him to pull. And he rips from the left, and that's a base hit. Cespedes has a one out single. That's a great at bat for Cespedes to just keep fouling off the tough pitches. And this was a fastball at 89. Got a veer towards the inner part of the plate. And really, Oberholzer's got to be extremely happy that it's a single with top spin instead of getting under the ball and driving it into the seats again. Compact swing. So hit number six for the athletics and here's Nate Fryman who's got one of those. You know we do get spoiled with Cespedes because every time he goes to the plate you expect him to do what he did. In the second bat with a home run. He's that strong and can hit mistakes so easily. Has speed. Can steal bases can throw out base runners. First pitch is outside. Single and a strikeout for Freiman so far in the game. And he's three for six in the series. Instead, who made the catch? Normally, that's a second baseman's ball, but I don't know if Altuve was going to get there. 
Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you can see where he's playing. He had a long run. It was not hit that high and over the shoulder. And no, Simpson has got a caught in the middle. Number 18, Alberto of what to do? He has started towards second base. And the question is, if the ball dropped, would it even made it to second? But still over the shoulder catch by Wallace, which is not easy. Washed it right into his first baseman bit. Nice play. So two outs now with Cespedes at first. And here's Kiaspo. A couple of fly ball outs for Kiaspo, one to center and one to right. Cespedes with just six steals this year. He's been thrown out seven times. If he slides feet first, it's probably okay, but you've seen him slide head first and jam his hand into the back, which is usually why he's wearing the protection on the left hand. Keep from jamming the fingers into the back a second. Last year. Cespedes had 16 steals and he was thrown out four times. Yeah, he also hurt himself, hurt his hamstring, and tried to go first to third on an afternoon game against the Angels. And that it could be that you want your bat in the lineup, want you to play left field. And based in it, while it's important, they'll take a chance of hurting himself. Right. Pasco rights one the left. He's got a hit. So a couple of live line drive singles for hits here in the sixth inning for the A's. And in the case of Cespedes at first, maybe the hitter behind him gets a few more fastballs, two and all. And Kiaspo got one in the inner half of the plate, and that sometimes kind of forces the pitcher catcher to call more fastballs with the possibility of steal at first base. Yeah, lefty threw 113 pitches against the Mariners in his last start, which is a complete game. It's a little bit different today facing the Athletics because they have fouled off some tough pitches and had some deeper counts. But he's good. I understand why the Astros like him and why they like him a double over the Braves. So he'll face Norris. So that time in the game where you like to add on a little bit. Norris has struck out twice against Overholzer. And the first pitch is hit just foul. Just got a piece of it on a changeup, 81 miles an hour. There's another hard hit ball to right field. There's a runner at second base right now. I don't know if he knows what the word stop means. Because <laughs> he has run through a few of Mike Gallego's stop signs, but Cespedes has great speed, great instincts, and Yanks usually lets him turn it on. If he gets started, it's rare that he will try to stop him. I'd like to have another opportunity with a two out hit. And Cespedes takes off, and he's going to steal third. Now they're going to have to be stopped now to base hit. He was given third. He was not being held on, and just decided to take it. Which, again, with the hard hit ball by Donaldson, that Crow threw in. Now with Cespedes a third, a hard hit ball in the outfield is not going to be a problem. So the count one and one. Swing and a miss. And the count one and two. Maybe Norris just not seeing Overholzer well. We have talked often about certain pitchers that 
Seventh stolen base for Cespedes, but the pitcher does not have an overpowering fastball. Some hitters say that they can sit back and kind of sit soft, look for something off speed, but still be able to hit the fastball. A lot of guys can't do it. Some can. Those who can are very good hitters, but it would probably left me on a righty hitter. Would mean it'd be a base hit to right field, which with a gap between first and second would be a pretty good thing to see right now. Pitch just got a piece of it. So the count remains one and two to Norris trying to get Suspidus home here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch number 99, and here it is. And again, switch for Great time to protect with the off speed pitch. Good change up at 81, and Norris getting a better swing. And Norris. Swing and a miss. He went with a fastball, and Norris strikes out for the third time. A strand two. Seventh inning coming up. It's 1 0 Athletics. To this one, folks. On this date in 1923, Howard Emke of the Boston Red Sox throws a no hitter against the Philadelphia A's. Second time in four days, the A's are no hit. But look at how it happened. Seventh inning, the opposing pitcher, Slim Harris. Now, Slim Harris, kind of a sinker slider guy, right? Slim? Yeah. Hit the ball to the wall for a double, called out for missing first base, preserving the no hitter. He thought it was a home run. He was watching all the way stepped over the bat. That's exactly right. And the umpire was watching. You think the newspapers don't write a little different now? Yeah. Let's see what that said. Empke's zippy crossfire came out of the shortstop. <laughs> when was the last time you read a local sports page in the, in the game story? You saw the word zippy. It's good. I like it. One of our girls had a little toy stuffed animal named Zippy. Zippy? All right. Not zippity doo dah either, just zippy. Derek Barton takes over at first base, so Nate Fryman is done for the afternoon. Yeah. 
One one to Trevor Crow and he lines one to right field and coming in his choice. He's got it. Crow hit it right on the nose. But he's retired. Well, fortunately, Michael Choice has played all three outfield positions. He played them in Triple A. As Steve Bucinich about number the 15, number 35. Jason Ricky. But he said it had nothing to do with it. He said, I was looking for available numbers. So while Boos is the best at trying to pair players with certain numbers, it was simply it was available. He wore it in spring training. He's wearing big ones. And might have made a nice play on a line drive. So that'll bring up Castro, who is 0 for 2. 18 home runs on the year for Jason Castro. Australia has retired seven in a row and ten of the last eleven. Good pitch took something off. There's Josh Side, the right hander. Saw him the last time the Astros were here. Astro takes a pitch that drops low. On deck is Matt Dominguez. Three two count the first at bat for Castro. Hit one high and deep to center field, but caught by Chris Young. That wasn't a fastball in on the hands, foul back. So a full count to Castro. Castro is 0 for 7 in the series. Payoff pitch, swing and a miss. He struck him out with a fastball. 89 miles an hour, but just a little up, and that is strikeout number six. You know, Kai, we have seen this all day when hitters look like they're expecting something else. And Nobody. do not and not Nobody. able to make contact Matt with Dominguez. a fastball at that velocity, but good movement from Dan Strader. So it was a fastball, but not the four seam over the top. Good movement and Jason Castro 0 for 3 today with a couple of strikeouts. High fastball is second and bat for strike three, and that was on one and two, but an even better one on the three two count. So here's Dominguez, a ground out and a double. Australia closing in on 100 pitches. It's right back to the breaking ball, and it's one and one. Dominguez double was kind of a Shallow pop fly that Cespedes is dull for in the fifth inning could not quite get it rolled him rolled behind him just a little bit. And a 2 1 fastball right down the middle Dominguez took. It. That was the best pitch he's going to see to hit in this at bat. You know and after the fastball up and in Dominguez probably thought it comes a slider and it wasn't it's was a fastball down the middle. There's a slider and he swings and misses at a ball in the dirt. That's going to be strikeout number seven, and that's going to be the end of the inning. Seventh inning stretch coming up. One nothing. The A's lead.
Nashville Toyota dealers. This is what Ioannis Cespedes did in the third inning. And then this is what Ioannis Cespedes did in the fourth inning. So he throws a runner out at second base, and then an inning later he homers a solo shot. That right there is the only run in the game so far. Dan Straley has gone seven shutout innings. He's allowed just two hits, seven strikeouts. And he is very sharp this afternoon. Brett Oberholzer, six innings, five strikeouts. Cespedes with the home running also had another base hit. So 0 oh, 2 and 1 for the Astros, 1 7 and 0 oh for the Athletics. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Now pitching for Houston, number 61, Josh Zide. So Straley's been good. We'll see if he goes back out there. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change, tune up, and spawn experts. Josh Zide takes over. The right hander making his 16th appearance. Talking about trucks, that must be Brandon Moss. Right hander comes in. Josh Zide. We'll see if he kind of incorporates more of a sidearm delivery, something that he has changed since we last saw him. Felt he was not making quite enough pitches in the normal fashion, so he dropped down a little bit to right handers. So Zide is ready. The first pitch to Moss. It's a fastball outside, 95 miles an hour. Suzuki to hit next, and then the top of the order, Lowry. And the Rangers will play tonight at the Angels. The Rangers have lost four out of five. The Angels have won seven out of nine. Holland and Richards, the matchup there. And the count. Now one and two. After the series in Anaheim, the Rangers will go home. They'll host the Pirates Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They'll have an off day Thursday, and then the A's will be in Arlington next weekend. Bouncer foul. Rangers have one more off day, and that is th next Thursday. So they will play 17 straight to finish the season. So home to Pittsburgh in the A's, away at Tampa Bay at Kansas City, and then back home to finish the season, Houston and the Angels. So just one more off day. The A's have two off days Monday. And then the 26th, which is the Thursday of the last week of the season. So there's the finishing stretch for the Athletics. So Hayes with two off days left. Rangers with one. Sky to right. Crow to his right and in makes the catch. So Moss has it. So the A's with 20 games left after today. Now Eight the home Number and 12 22. on the road. So two more road Suzuki. trips for the Athletics. So that last week, the A's will be in Anaheim Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They'll have Thursday off, and then they're in Seattle Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the Rangers at that time will be home. You see, all those teams, with the exception of the Rangers, have losses in the mid-70s, which says a lot, but... It means nothing. <laughs> I was going to say, it, it sort of says a lot. Yeah, it absolutely means nothing as the Astros have proven in their losses they, they have amassed so far this season. But, okay, the, the marathon, as they call it in baseball, is proof, especially the last month of the season. If you're in contention, it does not matter who you're playing, you want to play at your best. And Bo Porter knows it, trying to beat teams that are in contention, teams that have winning records. Is on the other hand, know that they want to just kind of control their own destiny, which is right now the position they're in. The Rays and the Mariners will play tonight in Seattle. It'll be Archer and Paxton. Paxton, one of the young prospects for the Seattle Mariners. 
the Rays are struggling. Rays have lost 10 of their last 13. Now they're still holding on to that number two wild card spot. But in this stretch where they've struggled, what they've done is they've lost the number one wild card. And they've allowed those teams chasing them to get very, very close. And they have to be looking forward to getting back home off the West Coast trip. For some reason, the teams from the Midwest and the East, the Mid or the Central and the Eastern Division, have a little tough time coming out west. I don't know if it's the beautiful weather in the Bay Area, the cool weather, refreshing. Or just traveling 3,000 miles with a different time time zone. And Whatever it is, if for some reason the team just did not play. Left field going back is Carter still going back. And Chris Carter right in the heel of his glove and it stayed in there. And that's out number two here in the bottom of the seventh inning. That's a very good swing by Kurt Suzuki. Remarkably, he hit it as far as he did. And fastball in and so he just waited. And Chris Carter looked like he had it all the way he did, but kind of casually going after the ball and almost planked it. You know, and again, as Brett Wallace last night showed, if you don't get to the ball and you drift on it, bad things can happen. And it happened last night when Wallace dropped the ball, but today Carter didn't make the ball. Lowry out of the leadoff spot today is one for three. And now he's behind in the count 0 and 2. The Indians are just underway. Indians in the thick of this wild card race. Indians got an early run. 1 0 in the first inning over the Mets in Cleveland. Nice. And Kluber is the pitching matchup there. Indians have won three in a row. They're six and a half back at Detroit in the central. Fastball is high. Big series coming up next week. Ray is the Orioles. Hosting the Yankees Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That one's ripped to center. Barnes going back. He's near the wall. He leaps and that baby's gone. Lowry goes straight away center. Two nothing A's. Jed Lowry, because how many times have we have seen him this year hit balls in which he thought would travel? Did not. But this one does. And Kak, you mentioned 95 with Zion. How about an 85? And what can happen on a 1 2 85 mile per hour slider? And Jed Lowry crushed it. all his strength and he took it to straightaway center. So now Young hits, so another home run for the Athletics. There's a spin and a mistake at 85, and Jed Lowry, what a great swing. 16 home runs for the Astros last year, number 11 for the Athletics this season, and number 11 comes against his former team. In the hole is VR. Throws, and Young beat it as Wallace came off the bat. What a great swing by Jed Lowry. And I, I don't know that he's running thinking that's going to go out, but Brandon Barnes ran out of room. Ball just kept carrying the deepest part of the park, straightaway center, just to the right of the 400 mark. And Barnes could not catch it because I couldn't believe it, but that's what you call getting burned on your less than your best pitch. And Jed Lowry got it. And a big insurance run. <laughs> Huge insurance run. So Chris Young aboard. 
credited with a base hit. Now with nine hits in the game, the Astros with just two. Donaldson has a base hit. He's one for three. 80th home run allowed by the Astros bullpen. The second most home runs allowed by bullpen, 55. 25 more home runs allowed. That more than anybody else. So no surprise that they, as a group, then the Astros pitching staff, getting starters, allows the most home runs. Wasn't in the eighth inning either. That's been the demise of the Astros bullpen, but today it occurs in the seventh. Could have been a better time. Two outs. That one is lying down the left field line and it bangs off the wall. Chris Young digging for third. Mike Gallego will hold him there. And Donaldson has a booming double. Second and third, two outs. Double number 34 for Donaldson. How about some elevation, Josh? Because this ball was crushed. Hanging slider again. And like we have seen him with. Curveballs, he jumped on the slider. He just had too much top spin. And small look at the rotation of the slider again, middle of the plate. And Josh Donaldson just banged it off the wall. High up about halfway and hit too hard to score. Chris Young from first. I got the first two outs here in the bottom of the seventh, but you know, since then, a homer single and a double. Maybe the fact that Moss hit a ball towards the end of the bat, if he got his sweet part, probably been a home run. Suzuki's drive went to the wall in left field. And then Jed Lowry has left the park, or left the field anyway. Conversation Derek Bart is already out in the on deck circle to pinch it for Fryman. Just to let O'Porter know that Cespedes, maybe a pitch to him. Who knows? Looks like he's going to. On the ground to the shortstop, VR throws in time to get Cespedes side retired. Lowry with a home run is 11th of the year, so we're headed to the eighth inning from the Coliseum. Lowry's home run makes it a 2 0 please.
All right, so the Indians with a good start in Cleveland. Here at the Coliseum, 2 0, the A's lead, and it is the top of the eighth inning. And a new pitcher, it's Dan Otero. So Otero takes over for Straley. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. 1.15 ERA for Dan Otero. This one's lifted to right. Moss shades his eyes a little bit. He's got it. Carter is retired. He's 0 for 3. So one out here in the eighth inning, and that'll bring up Brett Wallace. Number 29. Dan Otero kind of pointing. You see the numbers for Dan Straley. 103 pitches. Another tremendous performance by the A's right hander going for his third consecutive win. Which would give him nine on the season. Detroit, Texas, and now Houston in three consecutive starts. Team Moss stays in the game in right field. So Otero for Straley. Ramp out for through 35 pitches last night. Yeah, he might be an observer today. Especially that many pitches and a quick turnaround. There's a shot fair headed for the right field corner. Moss gets to it, then he drops it. So Wallace has a one out double. Uh, Josh Donaldson, uh, while Pitching chains of being made. He was being attended to by Walt Horn and the skipper. The swing, watch him swing and watch what happens after the swing. Please. The big please swing and then kind of hobbled out of the batter's box. Made it in the second, Mark but Krause. not running hard. And it looked like he grabbed his right ankle, but shock, shock, he's still in the game. It's hard to get him out. Still safe. When he rolled his ankle in Seattle early in the season, I figured he's done for the year. He popped up, stayed in the game, and has continued to play all year. Here's Kraus. Strong left handed hitter. And he takes the first pitch strike. And the big swing, and you know, just when he finished and gets to second, watch as he reached down. To the left ankle, my apologies. The left ankle. So maybe the landing ankle as he followed through. Looks like it was his push off. So 0 2 to Kraus with Barnes in the on deck circle. Well off the plate. So that double by Wallace, just the third hit for the Astros today. Well, he waited on that one and just hits it foul over toward his own dugout. Cap, you remember the start that Dan Strelly made in Texas May 21st, very similar to today. Seven innings, two hit, five strikeouts, no walks. A's won one to nothing on a Cespedes home run. And before Lowry hit his, it was identical. A home run by Cespedes and seven shutout innings, two hits by Dan Strelly. I think we can see exactly why the A's have been excited about Dan Strelly. Right, his time in the minor leagues and now last year joining the club in the big leagues and this year. Low joins De Leon, a couple of right handers in that bullpen. Another foul ball rolled to the far end of the A's dugout.
Bell there in the A's bullpen. Doolittle starts to throw. Little pitch last night. Doolittle Cook and Balfour last night. Donaldson knocks it down, scrambles after it, throws, and throw is high and well late, so it's going to be a base hit for Kraus. Donaldson, after he did not come up with it, he really had no chance at Kraus. So it's going to go as a single. But opposite field, and you see how far Donaldson was off the line and almost made a spectacular play. But the concern there, and fortunately, it was a good throw. The concern was making a bad throw hurriedly. So a double and a single has put runners at first and third. We're going to get a pitch runner. That's going to be. Starting pitcher from earlier in this series, Dallas Keuchel. So Keuchel will run for Kraus. <laughs> well, the only thing that uh, Bo Porter looks like is catcher who is going to be coming in. Clark is not as fast as Keuchel. First pitch is inside to Barnes. Because it is a catcher spot, so you. They could catch you out for a pinch hitter and put a pitcher in as a pinch runner. And then to bring a catcher in for all of these guys for the bottom half of the inning. Well, Cody Clark, the other catcher, must be pretty darn slow because that's who's going to come into the game, right? Well, he was thrown out last night by Judd Lowry from the outfield grass. Maybe he is so slow. Then. I think that's said it all. But September call up, so additional players, pitchers, and because Keiko is not going to be used. So as a starter, if he's okay running the bases, then so be it. Line foul. Two and one. I don't, I don't know how often you will see a pitcher right. pinch run as the tying run. Especially with an expanded roster. Yep. Oh, maybe Keiko's a sprinter. <laughs> I think you're right. We hope. Strike two and two. You know the, the concern now that Houston's in the American League, there's no the pitchers don't hit, so pitchers don't run the bases well, that often. Yeah, that's part of it too. Yeah. So he's, he's not a base runner. Yeah, and, and usually pitchers are not base runners. Two and two, big pitch coming up to Barnes. And Barnes shoots it foul, headed down toward the bullpen. VR is the on deck hitter. He's the leadoff man. So Keiko with his lead at first. Wallace over at third, and the 2 2 pitch. Broken bat, Ortera, Ortera has it, he throws, and they get the out at second base. Run comes in to score. Lowry had to backhand it. And that's a good play by Lowry. And it's almost a play where you want to make sure you get an out somewhere. If he would have had a chance, and it's hard. Look where the runner coming from third. Otero makes a great play. Look if he just looks to the plate. He's got Wallace by 20 feet. But he just had in his mind trying to get the lead runner at second, which he did, thanks to great play by Judd Lowry. That ball, like last night, that Moss threw to Lowry could have ended up in left field. But Lowry, last night and again this afternoon, exceptional play. Oh, by the way, Keiko didn't slide going to second. Yeah, we'll get to that when we come back. <laughs> Bit of a head scratcher. So Doolittle's coming in, and he's going to face. Jonathan VR run in for the Astros here in the top of the eighth inning. <laughs>
2014 A season tickets, and you can receive rights to purchase 2013 playoff tickets. That's what the A's hope for in October. You can be a part of that. For more information, go to 510-638-GO-A's or oaklandathletics.com slash deposit. And they're waiting right now for you to call, email, to contact the A's ticket office and the great opportunity. So here's Doolittle to face VR. The first pitch, he swings and misses. Came in last night in the seventh inning to face the same batter. He struck him out, trying to do the same this afternoon. Four and five record for Doolittle. Just 13 walks, 52 strikeouts. 59 on the third inning. That's impressive. And he jumps ahead 0-2 to VI. All right, here's remember the pinch runner is a pitcher. Maybe that's why. Let's check true. it out. Does he slide? No. <laughs> Right. Maybe that's why Otero was thinking about going to second because there was a pitcher at first. What a great play though by Lowry. Because he initially pulled his foot off the bag but had enough time because of the lack of slide by the runner, the pitcher going into second. Slider down and in. VR one for three in the game. And the pitch is hit, hopped up right behind home plate and into the seats. Barnes, like he had a decent jump on Doolittle. But it's always great when there are two strikes on a hitter and a hitter has to make contact. He cannot take a pitch when a runner, in this case Barnes, gets a good jump. And Barnes jumps right back out to his lead. Pitch just missed outside. So the count even at two and two to VR. Barnes runs and they got it picked off. Barton's throw is just a bit late and in the dirt. And Barnes. Beat it. So it's going to be a stolen base for Barnes. And you go in the first move, those kind of things can happen. And you can see the sign by Kurt Suzuki. It was the throw over, but the thing that Barnes did, he kept running. It was a close play. Yeah, very close. Quick tag by Jed Lowry on a great fielding play. The only problem is Derek Barton got in a good position, but he bounced it simply because with a throw over, it took a lot of time for Sean Doolittle to get rid of the ball. And Barnes runs again, and this one's popped up. Coming over is Barton. He's near the seats and cannot get it. Now Josh Donaldson was holding his position. He's not going to be trying to cover third if Barnes does run again. Barnes figures why not take it. Watch how he runs to the inside Ray. Yeah. That makes it a little bit tougher throw for Barton as well. Well you can also see Barton moving in farther to yeah. go get the throw so he could get a better angle but he could not make the transfer quickly enough and really no fault of Derek Barton because he tried to hurry a throw because of the time that it took for Duda to get the ball to him. Barnes runs again and they're going to have him picked off and he is tagged out. Unbelievable. The tying run at second base and Doolittle picks them off. Astros get one and we're headed to the bottom of the eighth. Two to one A's.
Well, it's a two to one A's lead over the Astros bottom of the eighth inning. So interesting strategy by the Astros in the eighth inning. Well, here's the pickoff at first and because Dula took a little time he was able to reach second but you're already the tying run at second and a foul ball puts him back with the inside move called by the bench and a stand up going to third base. So while it was almost successful the first time this time no chance. And the great shot if we could get it of Dave Tremblay just standing there like a statue because I talked to Dave Tremblay and he has told his players early in the game late in the game you don't want to run into outs on the bases because make them get you out That's right. by getting out not getting yourself out out to be the first game of the series first inning was picked off similar to that and you know it's it's a teaching time of the year it seems or the, the season really for a young club but Frustrating, very frustrating in a lot of cases because that you, that's when you have to put a, a must stop. Don't go. You know, you it's just, not worth it. You know, no, you, you can't even take a chance or something like that. Especially since you're already the time run. Well, that's the thing that that, that trying to steal. Look at Dave Trumley, the third base coach. Well, go ahead. Come on. What are you doing? And Barnes got there, and Dave Dave put his helmet down, and all Dave did was just walked over, picked up his helmet, hit at the dugout. Dave Tremblay is a good baseball man, and seeing things like that is, is, is tough on him. Tough on the organization. Carter has it. Well, I mean, Barnes trying to steal second, and he did make it. Mm -hmm. You can understand that. I mean, you're trying, to get move, a, yeah. Yeah, you're uh, trying to get to the scoring Houston, position, but team, Alberto Cayuso. To steal third, and it was his second attempt. Yeah. I mean, he went the pitch before that as well. So, I guess now you're a little bit more aware of it if you're the A's. But and, and you, you just absolutely cannot get picked off. And you can you can see a pitcher making that move because if he doesn't go, you don't do anything. That's right. Kiasko drives over right. Crow getting back quickly. He's got it. As the video game that puts you on the owner's suite is now available free on iPhone and iPad. It's called the Ballpark Ballpark Empire. You can build your stadium and make the decisions to guide your team to the World Series. Download MLB Ballpark Empire free today. Data and usage rates may apply. MLB Ballpark Empire. Something new for MLB. So your Seth Smith is going to hit for Norris. Norris. Manning for Derek Norris. Number 15, Seth Smith. So Smith will hit for Norris. Norris had a tough day. He struck out three times. Well, Seth Smith can sympathize with <laughs> Derek Norris because he had a tough night against Peacock. He struck out three times. A great curveball from the right hander. So the DH role in a couple of the games. Fryman DH last night did a good job. A couple of hits. That's Cody Clark who is now catching. Fourth player, and that's part of the batting. Line, right? He's the guy who doesn't run very well. He's the guy that came in to catch defensively while the pitcher pinch ran. High to center, Barnes coming in. And Barnes has it side retired. So Lowe has a three up, three down inning. Ninth inning coming up. It's going to be the top of the order for the Astros. It's a 2 1 A's lead.
Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. So it is the ninth inning. He's trying to make it two in a row over the Houston Astros after the Astros won game one of the series on Thursday. So Doolittle back out there. For Houston, number six. Jonathan John Dillon went through this part of the batting order last night. Although last night, his first hitter, VR, struck him out, but VR gets another opportunity. Saw six pitches from Doolittle last inning when Barnes was picked off trying to steal third. First pitch to VR is popped up on the infield. Tyaspo makes the catch, and that's out number one. So VR, the leadoff hitter, swings at the first pitch. Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> I just don't get it. Your leadoff man. Yeah, I know. Down. Number Two to one. Jose well, swing at the first pitch. Unfortunately, that same leadoff man was thrown out a second earlier in the game that <laughs> still looms large of what might have happened. So here's El Tuve, who is 0 for 3. And that one looked like a pretty good pitch, but called the ball to El Tuve. And I hope Greg Gibson didn't say low. Cook starts to get loose out in the bullpen. Trevor Crow, a switch hitter, is the on deck hitter. Tuve a ground out, a strikeout, and a fly ball to right field. I guess my thought is Ray is teams down by one, and you're the, the you're the batter, yep. and you're going to swing at the first pitch. Then you should be a guy who can tie the game. Right. It, well, you know what I'm saying? No, I agree. I mean, you have to force the pitcher to throw a strike. You're, you're looking for a base runner because unless you are the type that you mentioned that can yeah. swing tie the game, you, you better try to get on base. And by the way, the art does not have a home run this year. Exactly. He's more of a slap hitter and can utilize his speed. Chris Carter steps in there and he sees that first pitch. Glad he did, though. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a big out. Get the first one and keep the speed off the bases. Now full count to El Tuve, another guy you want to keep off the base because he's a base stealing threat. And after that 2 2 slider miss, the world shall be alerted that here comes a 3 2 fastball and just hope El Tuve swings too hard and, and makes it out and what he expects to get. And El Tuve pokes one foul and may have swung at ball four. It's because he knew it was coming and he was geared to swing. At a good fastball, good velocity. He was hopeful that it would be more in the strike zone, but from his standpoint, he was fortunate to foul it off and protect. He's going to get another one. 3 2 pitch is lined to right center in a base hit. So El Tube just had a nice controlled swing, went the other way, and that's a one out single. Well, I get another three no, two to this one. A, eight, a pitch Trevor, that close, Crow. but probably in the strike zone. We saw him last night against Balfour in the ninth, take a pitch about a foot outside and hit the right field. Now a couple of switch hitters, Crow with bat right handed, same with Castro. And again last night with Altuve getting the base hit. Bob Melvin had do little face Crow and the Castro last night. And he retired four batters in succession. First pitch to Crow in for a strike. Tuve dances off. He's got a good lead. It was one of those one way leads where he was actually. Kind of leaning back toward first. 
Crow is 0 for 3. This one's popped up. Shallow right. Moss coming in, and Moss has it, and that's the second out of the ninth inning. Now, sometimes the, the splits, and what they call with a switch hitter, the splits, what he does against righties versus lefties, sometimes it turns out to be exactly Nobody. what they hope. In the case of Doolittle, back to back Jason starts. Castro. I said Castro is switch hitter. My apologies, not left hander, but still faced Doolittle last night. They did well against him. His last batter do a little face last night and Castro struck out on a 2 2 fastball that was up in the zone. And Castro, a quiet afternoon, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a fly ball to center field. He's got 18 home runs on the year, third on the team in that category. Be the final out of the caught stealing. You have to wonder if Altuve can try to get in this scoring position where a single could score him. Outfield playing deep as they normally would with two outs and the time run at first. Yeah, fastball and Castro had a good rip at it. He fouled it straight back and the count is even at one and one. Tuve has 31 stolen bases. He's been thrown out nine times. And at the first move, he's going back to back. He's not going to get a jump. He'd almost try to get the little league lead and take off from there. Shading his eyes, coming in, he's got it, and that's the ball game. So the A's hang on and they defeat the Astros this afternoon by a final score of two to one. So the A's right now with a one game lead over the Rangers pending the outcome of the Rangers Angels game, which will be played tonight down in Anaheim. So the A's now 82 and 60. They have won seven out of their last nine. And uh, the first place team in the West final score again this afternoon. It's the Oakland A's two and the Houston Astros one. Thanks for watching A's Baseball and Comcast Sportsnet California, part of the NBC Sports Group. A's post game live with Brody Brazil, Shooty Babbitt, and Ben Roberts starts right now.